I don't want to be involved in conspiracy theories. I, you know, there are lots of them that can go on. We can speculate on that forever. What we really need to know is how, how those buildings came down. My husband Steve was 48 years old when he was killed on September 11, 2001. He was in the North Tower on the 104th floor. There are so many unanswered questions, and that's scary to me. We never had answers. Nobody ever stopped to have a scientific investigation. A scientific investigation. A scientific investigation. Tribute lights in the New York skyline an annual memorial to the lives lost on 9-11. Yet there's still more light that needs to shine, revealing truths that their family members deserve to know. September 11, 2001, a day that changed history. Four planes went silent and off course. Two of those planes crashed into the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Several columns were severed, and the jet fuel ignited fires that spread over several floors. About an hour later, millions watched in shock as both towers were suddenly and rapidly destroyed, killing almost 3,000 people, for whom truth and justice may have yet to be served. Hi, I'm Richard Gage, AIA licensed architect of over 20 years and member of the American Institute of Architects. I'm founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, a nonprofit organization of well over a thousand technical and building professionals. According to official government reports, the fires weakened the structural steel framing of both twin towers, leading to sudden progressive and total collapses. Unknown to most people, a third steel frame high-rise, World Trade Center 7, was also destroyed. Critical questions have been raised by more than 1,500 architects and engineers about the official explanations for the destruction of all three of these buildings. Along with more than 10,000 other concerned individuals, these professionals, collectively comprising more than 25,000 years of experience, have signed our petition. They're calling for a new investigation into the destruction of these three World Trade Center high-rises. This call is based on evidence that reveals a very different destruction scenario than reported by government engineers. As coherent sets of scientific facts are brought into focus by the experts, the data, and the witnesses in this film, you'll come to a much greater understanding of the events of 9-11 and will be in a position to draw your own informed conclusions. The new World Trade Center, Building 7, looms above the site of its original. Building 7 was a 47-story high-rise, not hit by an airplane. Yet, it was the third modern steel frame skyscraper to collapse rapidly and symmetrically on 9-11. It was a football field away from the North Tower and sustained minor damage from falling debris. Building 7's precipitous collapse was blamed on normal office fires. I'm Steve Barish, uh, founder and president of Barish Architects and Associates, Inc., a 33-year-old architecture planning and engineering firm. One of the things that, that really interested me is how quickly the Tower 7 fell. It fell within seven seconds, approximately, from top to bottom. This building was built in the mid-80s and uh, met all the codes at the time. From about 1965 until about 1985, my, most of my experience has been in a high-rise, multi-story steel buildings. NIST would have us to believe that, uh, that these were 
It was a typical office fire, scattered office fires, if you will, that brought this building down. Since the mid-60s, I've tried to follow high-rise fires because they're uh, something we worry a lot about as we design these buildings. And, and I'm not aware of any high-rise building that have come down as a result of fires. The coup de grace for me was when I found out that Building 7 had collapsed later that day. And when I saw Building 7 come down, to me, the fact that it looks like a, a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building I mean, that's what I call a smoking gun. Was the structural steel from World Trade Center 7 preserved, documented, analyzed, according to standard procedures for investigating engineering failures? 400 truckloads per day of material were taken away from the World Trade Center site and sent to China for recycling. There were laws violated in the destruction of that evidence. And for the American Society of Civil Engineers to ignore those events is extremely disturbing and is a violation, in my opinion, of their professional code of ethics. It was contrary to the way all investigations are done. If, if an airplane crashes, they seal off the entire area and nobody touches anything. They move it to a secure location and they reconstruct an aircraft. Normally, uh, when you have a structural failure, uh, you carefully go through the debris field, uh, looking at each item, photographing every beam as it collapsed and every uh, column where it is in the ground, and you pick them up very carefully and you uh, look at each element. We were unable to do that in the case of Tower 7. You can't do science when you are deprived of the evidence and when your hypothesis is the least valid instead of the most likely. When the most likely hypothesis in, in the case of Building 7 wasn't even mentioned, uh, this is not science. It's trying to prove preconceived ideas. Was a proper investigation performed that might have revealed the use of accelerants or explosives in World Trade Center 7's destruction? NIST concedes that they found no evidence for explosives. So then we asked them, well, did you look? And they said, no, we did not look for explosives <laughs> or residues of explosives. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want, call your, you want to call your mother or something? Just the fact that there were explosions means they need to be investigated. Oh, boy. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down. The building is about to blow up. Move it back. We are walking back. There's a building about to blow up. We don't have the real story on what happened because there wasn't a proper investigation done. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. As reported by the New York Times, engineers were baffled by the collapse of Building 7. Since no steel frame high-rise has ever completely collapsed due to fire, how are we to understand this mysterious event? High-rise buildings simply do not collapse due to fire. There has never been until 9-11 an experience where a high-rise building that was steel frame completely collapsed. There have been fires burned longer in similar structures without any collapse. This claims the fires were very large, very hot, and long-lasting, when in reality, observation, which has been researched by many people, shows these fires did, were, did not last very long. They were not in the locations where NIST claims they were at given times. I'm a fellow of the American Institute of Architects. 
for the 40 plus years that I've been practicing architecture. I've designed a variety of buildings from small houses to high-rise office buildings. Some of the high-rises that I've worked on are one shell and two shell here in Houston. I was project manager for a 22-story office building in Akron, Ohio. Later in the day when uh, World Trade Center 7 collapsed, they had already showed us pictures of a few fires in that building and I mean they weren't even raging and how could that cause a building to collapse as if it were imploded? Couldn't happen. According to lead investigator Sham Sunder of the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, World Trade Center 7 collapsed at freefall acceleration for more than 100 feet of its fall. What does the speed of the collapse reveal to us? Essentially, in less than seven seconds, uh, Tower 7 came down upon itself. It's just like taking your car keys out and just dropping them. That's how fast the building came down for over 100 feet. Which, and the only way you can get that is when there is zero resistance. And so what we're looking at is a building just coming straight down, falling right through itself with zero resistance. Buildings don't have zero resistance, which is why you feel comfortable walking into a building. This building had 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system, and that is intended to keep it from going anywhere. This is telling us that the building below it ceased to exist uh, for the first few seconds of the collapse of the building. Well, things in physics just don't cease to exist and cease to resist the forces that are on them. The building didn't disappear so the building can fall for 100 feet at free fall speed. That's impossible. That's a, a violation of, of the fundamental law of physics that says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If floors fall, they tend to fall and are braced by the floor directly beneath it. And there's some delay there. Because of redundancy, because of uh, all the other columns in the building that were not affected. Even if a floor were to collapse, it still wouldn't be able to